take a look at the last example in section 14.1. In this example, what we're going to see is that sometimes it is not possible to calculate the area of a region with a single iterated integral. In these cases, oftentimes we can divide the region into subregions such that the area of each subregion can be calculated by an iterated integral. If this is the case, then we can just calculate all of them individually, and then the total area will be the sum of the iterated integrals. In example 6, we're asked to find the area of the region that lies below the parabola y equals 4x minus x squared, above the x-axis, and above the line y equals to negative 3x plus 6. It's a good idea, especially in this entire chapter, whenever they ask you to find a certain area, to always begin by sketching the region that we're looking at. So I'm going to do a rough sketch of this. The equation negative 3x plus 6, that would be a straight line with the y-intercept of 6 and a slope of negative 3. So it's going to look something like like this. The graph of 4x minus x squared, that's going to be a parabola that passes through the origin. And it's going to look like this. Okay. So there's a lot going on here. They said it has to lie below the parabola. So it has to be below the parabola, above the line, and also above the x-axis. So the region R we're looking for is this one right here. So this is our region. This is 4x minus x squared. This line is the line y equals negative 3x plus 6. Let's see what type of an order of integration might be helpful here. And we'll kind of come back to, to one here in a minute. If I were to try to use vertical rectangles, So first of all, we would probably need to know, and you would want to solve for this, but where do these two curves intersect each other? Well, at this point, I didn't have it labeled, but if you set the two equations equal to each other and solve, we, or even using a graph, a graphing app, but you can use technology as well, this point would be the point 1, 3. So x is going to go from 1 over to here. You would also probably want to know when is this parabola going to intersect the x-axis, and this would be at 4 on the x-axis. And we would also probably want to know when the line is going to intersect the x-axis. And this would be 2. So if we look at our x values, x is going to go from 1 all the way to 4. But the bounds for y are going to change. As this, horizontal, or excuse me, as this vertical rectangle moves through the region, the upper bound and lower bound changes. The upper bound will always be the, the quadratic, but if you look over here, the lower bound is given by the line, whereas once we pass x equals to 2, the lower bound is going to be given by the equation of the x-axis, which is y equals to 0. So at this point here, we have a, a split where it's going to change. If we subdivide it, we can do two different iterated integrals, one from x equals to 1, to x equals to 2, where the upper bound for y would be the parabola, the lower bound would be the line, and then from x equals 2 to 4, the upper bound is going to be the parabola, and the lower bound would be the line y equals to 0, i.e. the x-axis. Okay. And so we could set up an iterated integral for each of those two pieces, add them together, and that would give us the total region r. Okay. And that's what we're going to do. That's the, the plan of attack we're going to take. If you were to try to see what happens if you were to do a horizontal rectangle, that doesn't get any better either. If I superimpose, let's say, a horizontal rectangle inside of this region, then initially from y equals 0 to wherever the, the max height of the parabola is, which would be 4, 
I didn't put that down, but the probability goes up to a maximum height of 4. So y would range from 0 to 4, but the bounds for x change. Here, the right bound for x, or the, the upper bound for x would be the parabola. The lower bound for x would be the line. But then once our vertical rectangle continues, or excuse me, once our horizontal rectangle continues to move up, then the right bound becomes, the upper bound is the parabola with itself, which really kind of complicates the situation and makes it more of a, an inconvenience. So let's start with our vertical rectangles. And maybe just to kind of keep things in order and keep them uh, nice and neat, I'll refer to this as um, region 1. I'll refer to this part as region 2. Okay. Let's set up an iterated integral to handle each of these regions. If it's vertical, we know that the order, again, that's going to be dy dx. For region 1, my x values are going from x equals to 1 to 2. So those are my outer bounds. The upper bound for my region as a function of x is 4x minus x squared. The lower bound for my region as a function of x is negative 3x plus 6. So that's region 1. The area of region 2, we're going to do the same order because we're doing vertical rectangles, so it's going to be dy dx. The outer bounds, x goes from here 2 to 4. The y heights are bounded above by the parabola, 4x minus x squared, and would be bounded below by the y-axis, which is the equation y equals 2 to zero. So now we have both of our iterated integrals set up. We're going to go ahead and, and solve each of these. For the first one, it's going to be the definite integral from zero to two. Antiderivative of y one is y with respect to y. We would then evaluate this from negative three x plus six to 4x minus x squared dx. Substitute in the upper limit of integration. Subtract the lower limit of integration. Plugged in. dx. And this would be equal to the definite integral from 1 to 2 of, we're going to have a negative x squared 4x minus a negative 3x would be plus a 3x. So it's going to be plus 7x. And then we're going to have a minus 6 dx. Let's take a look at the other one. If I integrate, again, dy... With respect to, to y, we get uh, y. We need to evaluate this from 0 to 4x minus x squared dx. This is going to be the definite integral from 2 to 4 of 4x minus x squared minus 0 dx, which is going to give us plus the integral from 2 to 4 of just 4x minus x squared dx. Let's try to work each of those pieces out. For the first one, let's focus on this one right here. Its antiderivative would be negative x cubed over 3 plus uh, 7x squared over 2 minus 6x you would evaluate that from 1 to 2. For the second one, the antiderivative of 4x is going to be 2x squared. Antiderivative of x squared is negative x cubed over 3. You would evaluate that from 1 to 2. 
And for this part, I'll leave this all up to you. This is an exercise from Calc 1. But if you work out the value of each of those evaluations, we should get a total area of 15 halves. So this is good practice. See if you can you know, check your computational skills here. But the total area of those two regions combined is 15 halves.